Good afternoon. Today, we're going to take a look at SAP Business One's core human resource functionality. Now, keep in mind, there are additional HR modules that are plug and play with SAP Business One. So you can extend the functionality that you see today if, uh, if you'd like to. But what we will show you is human resources out of the box from SAP Business One. So if I slide in the main menu, you can see here all the modules that come out of the box with Business One, including one here called Human Resources. Now, before we jump into Human Resources, let me explain a little bit about the cockpits here. I'm, I'm sitting in my financials cockpit where I've got access to all of the key performance indicators and the things that I need to see from a financial perspective. Um, you know, the things I need to see often and quickly are right here in front of me. Now, um, these cockpits are completely user definable. So if we want to create a human resource cockpit, we can certainly do that. But the thing that I think is really important, let me jump over to my home cockpit for a moment. And that's these messages and alerts, because these are a real important part of the human resource module. For example, when an employee is due for a, a recertification or an absent or a vacation, uh, something like that, you're able to get these alerts wherever you might be. Uh, and these alerts can let you know of uh, uh, reviews that are due and, and all kinds of HR related events. So the messages and alerts is a real important part of the HR module. So let's go ahead and let's jump into an employee master record. I'm gonna bring up my employee master record here. Here we go. So what you have is you've got a, a, a list, a bunch of header fields that really just define uh, a little bit about the employee, what department are they in, um, if you're in a, uh, what we call a multi-branch environment. So if I've got multiple plants, divisions, uh, those kinds of things, well, this is saying what, what branches, uh, you know, is that employee allowed to, to work in? So I can uh, allow them to work in all of my locations or just uh, limit them to certain locations. And then of course, the, the manager for the employee. Now, this being my employee record, when I log in, this is the user ID I use. And so the user code, of course, is alphanumeric. It could be the employee name as well. But um, uh, for me, it represents the region I'm in, Southwest 01. Um, all right, so let's go down here to the, uh, the sub tabs here. This gives the, you the ability to keep track of their primary work address as well as their home address. And then memberships they might belong to. So for me, I'm a tech, I'm also a purchasing manager, an accountant. And as far as the teams go, I'm on a sales team and I'm on the party planning committee. Now, if I jump over here to administration, this shows when the employee started and then what type of uh, employee is this? Are they sal salary, hourly? Um, you, can, you can create different types. You can see here the define new. This is really just for informational purposes. Now, this has no impact on payroll. Um, then I can keep track of all of the absentees for this employee. Why were they absent? Was it approved? Again, when we talk about those messages and alerts, if an employee requests uh, time off, of course, that can generate an approval request through the alerts directly to the manager. Um, so we've got things like absentee, education, certifications, diplomas, those kinds of things. You're able to keep track of all of that. Any kind of reviews, um, yearly reviews, you know, when was the last review date? We can calculate then for a yearly review when the next review date is. Any kind of previous employment information, if you want to maintain that. And then, of course, I can see uh, all of my timesheet entries, or you'll be able to, uh, you know, also run some timesheet reports as well. If we go to the personnel tab, this contains personal information, a little bit about the employee, passport, citizenship, those kinds of things. As you can see, most of this is optional. Um, there's a financial tab here where if you want to, uh, for informational purposes, uh, have their salary, employee cost, you can certainly do that. And then any bank details, if there's any kind of direct deposit. But again, this is only for information. If we go to the remarks tab, here you can key in up to five, uh, 2000, 
256,000 characters. So that's a lot of details and notes you can keep track of on that employee. Now, if you are running an advanced warehouse management system to maintain your warehouse and optimize your warehouse, well, then there are scanning uh, security options. Is this user allowed to, uh, uh, let's say, is this user allowed to uh, create a credit memo with a handheld scanner? Are they allowed to print barcode labels, um, you know, to do picking for a delivery, those kinds of things. And then you've got this attachments tab where you can have unlimited attachments. Uh, it could be the employee's resume, drug tests, uh, you name it. So that's the employee master. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, if you didn't see the, the kind of fields or you know, a place to store the kind of data you wanna keep track of for an employee, that's not a problem. In the uh, customization tools that come with the software, you're able to come in here and in human resources, you can add user-defined fields. So you can uh, add those to the uh, to not only the timesheets, but also in the master data. There's different tables in here where you're gonna be able to uh, add uh, uh, employee fields, uh, digital pieces of uh, uh, data, capture that kind of information that you might have that maybe no system has. So it's very tailorable. Um, all right, now let's go in and let's talk about the timesheets here. This is where if you choose to use this, you can capture your employee's time. And this gives you the ability to, uh, as an employee, you're able to come in here, specify the date of the uh, time, when did it start in. So if I started at 8 a.m. and I worked through uh, 5 p.m., and then I can simply record my type of activity. Maybe I was doing some project management, now I could record my time to a work order, to a project, to a cost center, to a stage in a project, to a branch. Uh, and I'm in running multiple plants and branches. Um, so all of this can be done. I can even apply my time to a service call, uh, put some break time in here. Was this, any of this billable, non-billable? Again, this is just for reporting purposes, but it does give you some really good details that if you are doing some customer related labor, you're able to quickly calculate the invoice amount for that customer. All right, so that's the time card capability. Then within the reporting, you've got options like an employee list, an absentee report, a phone book, a time card report. If I click on the phone book here, this will say, well, for what branch and then what department? And do you also wanna include any inactive employees? And then this will bring up a list of all the employees, the branch they work in, their office phone, extension, mobile, email, and uh, pager and fax. So this will give you a complete phone list. Now, although this is just a little uh, report here on the screen, this can be print preview, this could be printed, this could be um, emailed, uh, this could be faxed, this could be exported directly out to Excel, to a PDF. So if I wanna bring a phone list into Excel, and maybe dress it up and uh, add some colors, print it out, you know, maybe add some charts and graphs and whatnot. There's my data sitting in Excel. So it's real easy to get data out of business one into Excel, and it's just as easy to get data from Excel in the business one. But those are the reports available in the HR module. And um, the only other thing to mention is that there could be some sensitive data in that module, of course. And so one of the nice features in the setup of the system is the area over here called general authorizations. So there may be certain users, for example, Doris, where I don't want Doris having any access to HR. So I can set that to no authorization. Now, when Doris logs into SAP, she will not even see the human resource module. So a user will only see the things you give them access to see. Or we could go a little bit deeper. We can open up HR and say that, uh, you know, we want her to be able to read her employee record, but not change anything. And we want her to be able to add her timesheets, but we don't want her running any reports. And so we can, uh, you know, again, protect this, the, the system and the data in the system with some really good security controls. So we'll go ahead and set that update. And now Doris will have access to the employee master for read only and timesheets, but that's it. 
Okay, so that's the HR module. If that is enough uh, to meet your needs, that's fantastic. Remember, keep in mind here in the tools, you will have the ability to add your own tables, create fields for those tables, and register those as brand new data entry screens. So if you want to add a new form, let's say for employees with company property, might take you five minutes without any coding at all, and you'll have a brand new data entry screen sitting inside of human resources to do exactly what you want it to do. So the HR module out of Business One, it provides a really good foundation you can build on. And again, if you need a lot more HR functionality, employee onboarding, employee self-service, uh, you know, uh, maybe integration to payroll, those kinds of things, we have some extended HR modules we'd be happy to, uh, to talk about and, and show you. Thank you for watching.